day. It's windy and rainy outside today. It's a good day, I figured, to make a video on setting up a recurve, or standard recurve, whether it's a three-piece or a single recurve. It's the same setup, okay? So what I'm going to do is explain a couple of things to you, what you need to buy. when you. This happens to be a black hunt. I made a few strings for them, and I've shot them, and... For $106 from Amazon delivered to my house, you can't beat it, all right? They're pretty nice bows, all right? If you're gonna buy one of these bows or any bow, there's a couple of things you need to buy too. Get yourself a little used tackle box. You can get a shopping bag for a while until you get something to put all your equipment in. But there's a couple of things you need to do. Get a T-square, see it's shaped like a T, clips on a string. It'll give you the knock height, okay? Also, from the throat of the grip, it'll measure the brace height, okay? The other thing is crimp pliers for these little knock sets, okay? And for these recurves I've been using for years, uh, the ones with the black rubber, they come in little different sizes. These are like the middle ones, the black rubber, okay? Also, you get yourself a good boats of uh, a good bow stringer okay some of them come with bow stringers this actually comes with a bow stringer goes tip to tip i kind of like the boot and the rubber a little better okay and uh i'm gonna put it all together and show you what to do all right this will help you. you you buy any recurve you watch this video you'll be able to set it up if you have an ilf bow that's a whole nother world uh, you'll have to look at Bear Bow Joe. I have uh, videos on setting up ILFs, a little more complicated, limb angles, okay, different things, tillers. But um, if you get an ILF bow, the other thing you need to buy is get yourself an SAA, SAE uh, Allen set and a standard uh, and a metric set, okay? Get one of each because you'll be using them, all right? These are things that you will need here right and you'll start off with a little archery box i started off with a tackle box small one i got a gigantic bag because i do everything i make strings i have serving different kinds of serving in there everything you could imagine okay i even have stuff to set up compounds in there all right so i'm gonna pause this and then we're gonna unpack it i'm gonna, pour it. I'm gonna unwrap this here so it comes all wrapped nice I'm going to unwrap everything, and then we're going to put it together. Okay, I made some strings and put together a few of these for my friends. And the more and more I look at these, the more and more I like them. They're a really great bow for the price. A couple of things I like in all recurves. See how this has got a radius shelf? Okay. It's not flat, it's radius, so you have a small surface that the arrow is going to ride on. Okay. Instead of some of these, when you put the limb limbs on okay they have nuts and bolts you know big knob that'll tighten down the limbs these have these recess that you would see on like an ILF bow they look much nicer and it's an allen key and it comes with an allen key that you can really snug it up it has felt in between and that felt will help quiet the limbs when you bolt them down very nice very nice comes with a little piece of felt for the shelf it's a little short for the shelf and the arrow pad the other thing i suggest everybody buy and you go through it go to like your local hardware and get the industrial strength <clears throat> industrial strength velcro okay you'll throw half of it out you'll throw this prickly side out and keep the velcro okay the soft velcro side it's actually a little thinner a little softer and it's going to work a little better. And we're going to use that on this bow, okay? <clears throat> Whenever you buy a bow, some bow will say, some bows will say top limb and bottom limb, okay? If you look at the riser here, you see the shape? This one here, the limb looks like this for the bottom. And the limb for the top is square with a notch off the corner, see? Square with a notch off the corner. So you know what top and bottom is without having to look and read what it is, okay? They fit right on. Put these on, okay? A 
like I said, the, the basic setup part of this you could, is for any bow, any, any recurve that you get. Okay, and that has to do with brace height, setting it up the way you're hitting. <clears throat> it's got a nice pin, I would call it a post. And uh, what you do is you, when you put that limb in the post and the bolt on, keeps it nice and aligned, perfect. Okay. Now I've had bows before that I bought that had a little bit of play in them. These, you know, a little play left to right. And you'd have to really align them, make sure that the limbs are aligned, but this is perfect. Fits absolutely perfect. <clears throat> so, sorry this part takes long, but you wanna put together your own bow, might as well watch the whole thing. Okay, now how do you put these on? You put them on where I put my thumb on it. And I put a little pressure with my thumb. I don't want to gorilla tight it and pull out any inserts. I don't want it loose, but I want it snug. So you put the Allen key in, right? Look, two fingers, right? That's it. Okay. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the shelf. Okay. We're going to see how long we need it. We're going to cut it a little longer because we can trim it later. Okay. I'm going to flex it. See if you can see I'm going to flex it around this. Okay. Some people draw a line, but I don't want to get any marks on the riser. All right. I'm going to figure out where it is. Make a little loop. A little curve, a little cut. Let's check it out. Looks good. Now because it's curved, it's curved in the front and the back. I'm gonna just round the corners a little bit. Like that, just take a little bit off the corners, front and back. Okay. okay, see how nice it fits. Okay, the one thing that I do that a lot of people don't do <clears throat> is I take a little bit of Velcro, a little thin strip, very thin, and peel it off. See how tiny that little piece is? Really tiny. And what I do is, right here, right above, you see where the throat of the grip is? That's like a pivot point. <clears throat> right above that throat of the grip, on the outside edge, I'll put this tiny little strip. Okay? Like I said, I like the fact that this is a crown, the riser. Look, we'll take this off. Now, once I put that strip on, <clears throat> I'm going to peel off this uh, Velcro we have. And whenever I make a video, if you watch them, sometimes it's a little difficult getting off the, uh, the backing. Okay, but we got it. Okay, now you see how we got the corners cut. Make sure you go against the back here. Start with the back corner. Okay, come around. And you just push it down nice, so it's nice, right? Yeah, just make sure it's all good. Okay. 
Now, <clears throat> by me putting that little strip, okay, on the edge, kind of gives a little tiny minute slope. Okay, kind of makes the arrow, arrow uh, rest, okay, kind of angling the slightest little bit, okay. Then we're going to put a pad, cut a pad, and I'll show you it's important where we put the pad. <clears throat> And we could change with the point of where we put the pad to affect the impact. <coughs> okay. You see where the throat of the grip is? Okay. What I like to do with the pad is put the pad above the throat of the grip. And if you look at the surface of this, it's kind of rounded, okay? Even this is rounded. So in other words, if you put the pad right here on the end, right in the center, okay, it's at the high point. And if your arrows are hitting to the left, you could move that pad back a little bit. It'll actually move the arrow impact to the right a little bit, all right? Because you're moving the pad back. So we're gonna start out right on top, okay? Okay, feel a little off. Like I said, we're gonna put this one till we see how it shoots. Right above the grip, right above that pivot point, right here, okay? See, that's where you wanna put it, okay? Okay, I'm gonna stop it here and then I'm gonna show you how we string it. There's a reason I'm stopping it. I gotta put the uh, camera stand up just to show you, okay? Okay, because it comes with its own stringer <clears throat> and you may buy one of these, I'm gonna put the standard string that comes with it, okay? On with the bow string that came with it. If you look, this says little cups, a bigger cup and a smaller cup, okay? The big cup goes on the bottom and the smaller cup goes on the top, okay? Take note that on bow strings, there's always a bigger loop. The bigger loop goes slides on the limb on the top and the bottom loop goes right on inside the string groove okay so top slides down on the limb okay now we got this this is a tip to tip bow string okay <clears throat> back up the camera a little bit here okay Okay, what we do is we put, let me get that away. We put two feet inside the bottom of the stringer, two feet inside the bottom of the stringer. And what we want to do is, you see, you make this feet wider so it's down below your waist, okay? So this way it's easier to pull up straight without twisting and remove the pressure, okay? As you lift up, you take this top loop and slide it on the groove, okay? Okay, and then you'll release the pressure. A lot of guys will buy strings or custom strings and they'll say, hey, the inside loop of my string is cut, okay? And uh, sometimes, yes, sometimes inside these grooves, they're a little rough. I felt these, these aren't. But a lot of times the cause for guys cutting the loops on their string is this, watch. They have a very heavy bow, right? And they're pushing, see? There's no pressure relieved on this limb. They're sliding this up, pushing, and it makes friction here and here, and actually cuts the loop. They're forcing it, but what you wanna do is relieve the pressure. Look, see two fingers gentle? Pop it on, okay? All right. Whatever bow you buy, it comes with a recommended brace height, okay? 
I made a few of these. The recommended brace height is like seven and a half to eight. Okay. So these T-squares that I told you you should buy, okay? What you do is you put it in here in the throat of the grip, see? And see what it says. This is a standard string and it says six and three quarter. All right, this is an endless loop, what they call an endless loop string, okay? Okay, it's got hard serving top and bottom, the loops. And yes, you can twist this. You'll twist this and how you do it is you slide the top arm and you take off the bottom and twist from the bottom, okay? Put it back on and as you tighten it up, as you make the twist, it'll shorten the brace height, okay? So the only reason I use this bowstring is because it comes with it. We're going to put on the string I made and set it up. Okay, we're going to take off that original string, but we're going to use my bowstring. All right, they come by different brands. It's a boot, goes over the end, and a rubber block, okay? You put the rubber block close to the top on the working end of the limb. See, on this one here, I can put both my feet in. A little, I made it a little shorter and I could just lift up stress free and take it off okay <clears throat> on once again on this string that comes with the bow see how it's on the top limb and the bottom you would take it off and twist it to make it shorter and then put it on Okay, see, it's tightened up already. You gotta slide it down and then restring it and keep on measuring it. I know from experience, these like about an eight inch brace height, okay? But we're gonna take this off. Nothing beats a custom Flemish twist string, okay? There's a lot of guys that make them. There's no magic or miracle strings. They're all good. You just gotta find somebody who cares about making the strings, does a good job, all right? This happens to be one of the strings I make. I make them for myself and for friends, friends of the family, okay? And this is happens to be X99 with acrylic puffs. You could look, actually look on Bear Bow Joe. I have a video on how to make these strings and puffs and install them. Okay, and what I heard was that the wooden string maker from Three Rivers um, works well with the, my video. That's what the people have actually told me, okay? So anyway, here's the new string. We got the uh, top loop slid down. The bottom loop is on. Bottom loop is right inside the string groove. We put the boot on. Okay, like I say, I like these better. Okay. Seems to be that when you put the big boot on in that block, it seems to be a little less stress on the limbs. Okay. All right, we're gonna let it down. Okay, I have the block on, I have the boot on. Let's see what we got. Okay, like six and a quarter. So now we're going to take it off. We're going to slide it down the limb. Okay. I slid it down the limb again. And we're going to take the bottom off. And I'm going to twist it up a bunch of times. Okay, put the bottom boot on. I'm gonna slide this all the way up as far as it goes. Put the block up against it. Okay, let's see how big the brace height is now. Okay, the brace height is seven and three quarter, okay? 
for the purpose of this video, I'll leave it at seven and three quarter. Okay. Now we're going to install the knock crimp. Okay, the knock set. And you put your bow square on. Okay. You make sure it slides all the way down to that radius shelf. Okay. It's nice and square. Okay. And then there's kind of a little rule. Well, just to make it easy for everybody, never set a knock below three quarters, okay? See the lines on here? It looks like eighth inch and quarter of inch, okay? Actually, I said never below three quarter, never below three eighth, okay? See the little lines, eighth? We're going to set this at three eighths. The bottom of the knock is going to be on three eighths. That's the rule. Okay, I put the knock on and I crimped it with the tool. Okay, just to show you. Okay, I've got to move it up just a little bit. I want it where the bottom is 3 eighths. When you buy these crimp pliers, you see there's a little point on it. In the middle, see the little point, the little like tooth. What you do is you put that in between, put that in between here and push down and it opens up your crimp. Okay. And once it's loose, you can actually twist it up. And put your T-square on again and make sure it's exactly where you want it. Okay, it's a little better. Okay, the bottom, okay, is at the 3 8 mark, okay? Then we're going to crimp it tight. Okay, use the end crimp, and we're going to crimp it tight. Okay, give it a little pluck. See these puffs and no, new. You see a little dust flying. Okay, and now we're going to get some arrows, and we're going to take a shot and see where it impacts. Okay. Okay, these are my hunting arrows. They don't make these anymore. They're Beeman Center Shot 400 Spine. Okay, it's a 530 grain arrow because I got a 50 grain insert, 150 grains up front tip. Okay, all right. This is just what we're going to be using today. Okay, target point. All right. I'm going to set up the camera so you can watch me shoot. Okay, before we shoot, I want to discuss this. Two things that you're going to have to buy. You have to decide if you want to try a glove or if you're going to want to try a tab, okay? And you're going to have to come up with an anchor point, okay? So, years ago, when I was younger, I liked these thin gloves. For some reason, in my head, I felt the need to feel the string and the anchor, okay, together, okay? But I realized that all you need is a solid anchor point, elbow all the way back so everything's in line, okay? A solid anchor point, and you could use like these American leather heavy gloves. You don't have to feel the string. Put it right into the groove, right up deep, deep in the groove, okay, this is the glove. 
and you feel a glove against your face. You don't have to hurt your fingers. You don't have to feel that string laying into your finger. You just gotta feel your anchor point. And you gotta be a shooting machine. I shoot static, I keep my hand there. I feel this top edge of my hand against my cheek. I do three under, top finger to corner of my mouth. And the reason I do top finger to corner of my mouth is it's closer to my face, it's lower, you can get more range out of it. If I want middle finger to the corner of my mouth, you got that cheek there, and it's, you could feel the difference. It's a little more awkward, and you got a little more meat to deal with. But if you go three under, okay, three under, top finger to the corner of your mouth, you could see the B here in your hand. You could slide your hand along your jawbone, almost like an Olympic shooter, and that top finger will wind up in the corner of your mouth. And it's very solid. You're under this big fleshy piece of cheek here and you have a nice solid anchor. <clears throat> now, if you look at Bearbo Joe, one of my videos, why do Bearbo shooters have tape on their nose? I'll show you slow motion video of me whacking my nose with a tab, okay? I had these tabs that were just plain flat leather tabs, all right? And when I was releasing, I never had this problem with a glove. The glove has leather built around the top and it was away from my face. And as I released the glove and the string came off, the string would fly past my nose because of the thickness of the glove out away. It would release away from my nose. But when I used a tab, right, a tab, one of those plain leather tabs, my hand was close to my face. And when I released, the string was close to my nose and it would whack my nose every time. All right. So I always stuck with a glove. But then I bought this Yoast tab. Okay. Trimmed it up. You want to trim it up. You want to trim it up so that you could feel the top finger or the middle finger to the corner of your mouth. Okay. And as this has a metal plate, you see the metal plate there? with marks on it too, for like string walking, it has marks. I say quarter eight, you know, they, they look like quarter eight marks. But because of this metal plate, okay, it's away from my face enough that when I release and the string rolls off, it clears my nose, okay? Now that's the difference, so I'm helping you out here. If you're just starting out in archery, setting up a recurve, I actually do like the tab, I got used to it better. And I do like top finger to the corner of my mouth for a couple of reasons. It's solid against my jaw, away from this meaty part of my cheek. So here we go. We're going to take a shot. We're in the house. Okay. And what I'm doing here, so close that I'm gap shooting. If you see that little white dot, that's a little piece of tissue on the bottom of the target. When you're gap shooting and you're close like this, let's say a deer, you probably have to put it a little bit under the belly of the deer because it'll rise, okay? And as you go back, at some point, you keep putting the point of the arrow higher and higher, maybe 20 yards or 25 yards to be point on. It depends on your arrow bow weight setup, okay? And then maybe at 25 yards, you'll have to put it on the back strap of the deer, okay? And it'll drop in. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to look for left to right impact. This spine, if you look on an arrow chart, this spine and set up for this bow at my 27 half inch draw is, is pretty close. It's just about on the money, okay? So here we go. Okay. Okay, now let's go look at this close, just to see. Okay. Okay. I put the point here, and it's up here, a little to the left, okay? Now, what I could do is, because I said that this shelf, this um, riser here, is radius not only on a shelf but over here too I could peel this off okay and move it towards the rear a little bit 
Okay, and we'll see what happens. See if I move it over to the right a little bit. Don't get me wrong, once we go outside, I'm gonna actually tune this a little better with a bare shaft and a flat shaft, and you can look at Bare Bow Joe how I do it. But okay, see we moved it a little to the rear of center, okay? A little to the rear, the front edge is over the throat of the grip. Let's pull it out. Got a lot of penetration, This I like it. Sounds pretty quiet too. Okay. You'll have to try this on your own too. Three fingers under, along the jaw. Make sure your elbow is all the way back. I hate when I see guys with the chicken wing. Okay, they gotta make sure that elbow is all the way back. You can't go no more. If somebody pushed on your elbow, your whole body would turn, okay? Let's take another shot now that we move the pad back. Okay, just to show my point, let's see. Okay. See, I move the pad back and the impact is a little right of center, okay? So I did just, just did that for a demonstration for you, okay? We could play with it more, but now you know how to set up your bow. You know the few things that you need to buy, all right? Lock pliers, crimps, good stringer. Get yourself, you know, um, SAE Allen keys, metric Allen keys. If you're gonna buy a tab, spend a little more money and try this Yoast tab with the plate. This is a three under Yoast Pro tab. And I found it works really well. Okay. Once you get the bow, I would suggest that there's a lot of string makers. And, and really, there's no magic strings. Good string material. This is Fast Flight. This happens to be X99. I make these. You can look at Bear Bow Joe. You can make your own string for my video. Okay, and like I said, that board, the wooden board from Three Rivers is supposed to work well with my video. The puffs, I made a jig for to make these puffs, and I have an installation video. There's a special way to install these, how they tie it on. And you could still slide them under pressure, like when it's strung, you could still slide them. Slide them a little bit, let go, it'll spin a little bit. You could still adjust these, even though they're tied on, all right? This is a great bow. I've shot these before. For 106 bucks, delivered to your door. You can't go wrong. It's quiet. I'm gonna take this in the woods hunting, okay? So that's my video on how to put together a traditional recurve from scratch, okay? And if you have a long bow, it's the same principle, okay? Long bow is the same principle. The only thing with long bows, all right, and there's different types, there's an actual real long bow, okay, where they have like a six, to six and a half inch brace height or so, and then you have ILF bows that have handles like this, and they have long bow limbs that go on. Sometimes the brace heights on those type of bows can go out to eight inches because of the design of the riser. But if you look at that little seven lakes longbow that I have up here, okay, all right, that's like a six and a half inch brace height, okay? So, hope this video will help you. I hope some of those tips for anchor points and release, keep your hand against your face if you're using back tension, maintain pressure as you release, your hand slide your hand against your face. If you're doing static, keep it right there. And the thing that I do that nobody else does, because, you know, Olympic shooters keep a loose grip. And if they do, I tell them to put finger sling on. But this bare bow, when I shoot bare bow, I hold my hand on target and I hold it firm there. I want to be a shooting machine. When I release with my hand, I want my bow hand to try and stay up and on target as I release, okay? That's, that's the difference on how I shoot. Good luck, watch my other videos. I hope this helps you put together your own bow, all right? Little trick about moving the pad back and forth, okay? 
and then uh, also arrow spline. Look at the chart. Get it close. All right. Have a good day.